Hello, welcome back to my channel. I am Amber from Amber's Books and More, and today I have my wrap up for both March and April. Um, I actually didn't read very much in March, so I decided to just go ahead and combine March and April together. I read six books for March and six books for April. So let's just jump right in and get started. Okay, so starting with March, um, I started out the month pretty well. I read two books back to back in the same series, and that is The Thousandth Floor by Catherine McGee, and then I jumped right in to Dazzling Heights by Catherine McGee. So this is book one and book two um, in a series. So uh, these books are basically about these towers that they build in New York City in the future to where they are huge and they're a thousand floors, and it's basically like a city within a building, and I at first thought that it was going to be about like everybody had gone into these, but no, like, so no, basically the rest of New York City still exists. They can leave the town anytime they want to. It's just that um, it's kind of convenient. And so the bottom floors are very large. Of course, they take many, 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 many city blocks and they have thousands and thousands of people that live in this tower. And of course, the higher up you go, the more expensive it is. So your upper class, the bottom is more of a lower class. So it's kind of, it kind of had this like, Gossip Girl, and then also like a mystery because you have to find out who died. Um, and in both of them, somebody dies at the very beginning. You don't know who dies, you just know that it's a girl and you have to find out why. So I give the first one four stars. I really enjoyed the concept. Um, I think that it was a really cool story. Um, but then with the second one, I only gave it three stars because it's starting to kind of have a pattern of who they're killing and I don't really think it's a great pattern to have uh, but I am going to continue with the series when they come out I am kind of curious to see where they go with it you know um, so I'm definitely I definitely recommend these if you kind of like a more just futuristic earth sci-fi instead of a space sci-fi and then I read Giant Days volume 3 then I read Giant Days Volume 3 on Hoopla. Um, I do like this series. I've been giving them con pretty consistently four stars. Um, it's just, I don't know. I, I am con continue with the series because it is for free and I do really love the art style. I give it four stars. Um, but it's not something that I think is super rememberable. I don't know. It's just okay to me. I really should probably have rated it a three. But I gave it a four because I do love, 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 love the art. So the next thing I read in the month of March was Renegades by Marissa Meyer. Um, this is a sci-fi book about heroes and villains. So it's a sci-fi about like heroes and villains, um, but it's not like you think. So our main character is actually one of the villains. And so in this world, there are many superheroes and many supervillains. And it's kind of asked the question of like, who is the supervillain? Who is the superhero? What makes us a villain? What makes us a hero? That kind of thing. I really actually really enjoyed this story. I think I gave this four stars. Uh, I just absolutely love Marissa Meyer. Mar I adore Marissa Meyer's writing style. And I think that I, if you liked the Lunar Chronicles and the, her writing style for those, I think that you will really enjoy this. Um, so yeah, this one is really good. And I'm excited about the sequel on this one too. So then the next book I read in March, um, I did as a buddy read with Julie over at Pages of Pens, Natasha over at My Reading Is Odd, and Chelsea at Chelsea Dolan Reads. And then we also made a hashtag on Twitter, um, and it was for House of Leaves by Mark Daniel Lewski. And this one was definitely one of those books that you kind of brag about finishing, you know, kind of like if you read the Iliad or something like that. Um, so this is a kind of a manifesto type document that there's two pieces of it there's one is the actual story that the documentary type paperwork is about and that is about a haunted house that these crazy hallways and doors just start appearing the house is bigger on the inside than on the outside which is technically impossible um, and then also the person that is compiling all of this um johnny it's also kind of telling his story and his descent into madness as he's reading about it. Um, so this is told kind of in um, a different format. So you have normal pages that, you know, look like that. 
But then you also have pages that have barely any text. They start to get smaller. They start to kind of go to the side. Um, and then you have some really crazy pages that were honestly kind of hard to read. Um, there's things that are marked out in red. There are things that just, I don't know, it's hard to explain. It, it was a very odd, but here's the pages that are kind of crazy. Um, it, it was a different read and it definitely was worth the experience. And I did actually really enjoy the story of the house. Um, I don't think it ended that great, but it was a ride. So I gave it four stars because just the fact that somebody actually thought this up in their head and created it, it was kind of a masterpiece in that respect. Uh, but I will definitely be bragging about this one for years. So there you go. So the last book that I read for the month of March before I went into my reading slump because I was moving and things like that um, was Obsidio by Jay Kristoff and Amy Kaufman. And this is the final book in the Illuminae files. And this one also has, you know, an alternate um, writing style. So it's kind of told as um, somebody's putting a dossier together to take down this large corporation. Um, it, it was just as good as the rest of them. I absolutely loved it. It was a really satisfying end to the trilogy. And I'm excited to see what these two come up with for their next series together. And I gave this one five stars. So that was it for March. So let's jump right in and get to April's reading. Okay, so like I said, for April, I also read six books, but I actually read more that I absolutely loved and found some new favorites in April. So I'm really excited to get into what I read. So the first thing I read was Paper Girls Volume 4. This is the newest release of this graphic novel series. I absolutely love this series. It is set in the 1980s originally, but there is a lot of, like every single volume, they time travel into another era. Um, so they've gone way far in the past. And in this one, they were in the like 2000s, I think, like right at the, the turn of the new year. And it was so good and I loved it so much. And I love the art style for this one. I think that it is just absolutely beautiful. Um, and I definitely want to continue. And I've now bought all of these in physical format because I just love them so much and I want to reread them pretty soon probably. But um, I definitely gave this five stars. I absolutely adore this series. If you like sci-fi and you like Saga, I think that you would really like this. And Brian K. Vaughn actually wrote this one as well, which is the writer for Saga. So... Of course it's great. So since that graphic novel kind of helped push me out of my reading sump a little bit, I finally picked up The Serpent King by Jeff Zetner. Um, this one, Julie over at Pages and Pens, has been pushing me to read for quite a while. And I'm so happy that I did. I gave this one five stars. It was so good. He has got away with words, let me tell you that. He, his, the way that he portrayed the Southern Tennessee kind of area, you know, I'm in Texas, so I'm not far from where this story takes place, but he really understands that area very well. Um, and it, it's a very slow burn, but it's very character driven. I fell in love with all the characters. I cried for hours when I got through reading this thing. It is so good. Um, if you really enjoy those kind of slow burn character building dramas, I think that you would really love this one. And for like contemporary, this is the kind of contemporary I like, the kind that make me love the characters. It's not just about romance. It's about much, much, much more than that. And it breaks my heart. That's my kind of contemporary. And this one definitely fit the bill for that. Five stars. I loved it so much. So then I'm inspired, right? I'm like, yes, I'm back in my reading. I'm out of my slump. So I decided to go ahead and pick up Impulse by Ellen Hopkins. So Ellen Hopkins um, wrote Identical, which was the first book I read by her. And her, she is she tells fiction, but in poetry form. And so everything is told in prose, uh, but it does tell a complete story. Now I loved Identical. I did not care for this one too much. I gave this one three stars. This one did not really, to me, deal with mental health issues very well and mental illnesses. Um, I just, and of course with Ellen Hopkins, there's tons of trigger warnings that you can find online if you want to go and find it her books are very problematic in that sense to where not really problematic but they just bring in she puts a ton like she always puts a ton in her books you know, you have you'll have like incest and you know rape and mental health issues and suicide and all kinds of stuff in her books so you just go into the any of hers knowing that um but I did pick up the 
next book in the series is a two book kind of duology um but the the second book is one of the other characters sister's point of view um and so i am going to read it i am curious as to how she took the story but i don't know this one wasn't as good as identical to me but luckily things picked up because then i decided to read the wicked deep by shay earnshaw whoa guys first of all this cover in itself is beautiful right but i was very lucky that i got one of the first editions that have this hardcover um, there are a few of these left out there in the wild uh, it was only the first printing uh, once they have started printing the second time they are just a black co uh, underneath cover so hopefully you're able to get one of these but this is basically about these three girls that are unfairly marked as witches and they are killed back in the 1800s then they start coming back every single summer um, in different girls bodies and killing boys and so basically this is takes place in one summer where there's a new guy in town and they're trying to figure out who the girls are and who they're going to kill next and it was so good like I gave this five stars, okay, first of all. But second of all, it's just so atmospheric. You know, you could really see and feel and smell and taste the air, like, in this village that they lived in. And it made me kind of want to go to the East Coast where it takes place just because it had such a small town, like, witchy town feel. I don't know. It's just, it was so good. I loved it so much. I definitely see myself rereading this again sometime soon, probably. Um, and definitely picking up the very next thing that Shay Earnshaw writes because I did follow her on Pinterest and she has a work in, a couple work in progress um, boards that you can follow. And it has pictures that are kind of have the feeling or inspiration for what she's working on. And they both look on point there's one like i think she calls it the river or something and i'm i'm down so um definitely pick up this one if you like witchy books that are set in the real world and are not too magical because there's not really much magic it's just like a magical feeling about this one but it's so so good so the next book i picked up i actually went to the north texas teen book festival here in irving texas where i live and um, I've seen this book around in It Is The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo. And when I found out that it is told in prose, like how Ellen Hopkins are, so it is definitely um, poetry that tells a story. And so basically this is a story of a girl that has a really bad home life and just not a very good, not a very happy person. She's dealing with some issues and she discovers slam poetry and it really helps her. And so you're not, some of the poetry tells a very story-like format. And then whenever the character is telling slam poetry, it is written in a very slam poetry format. Now I did also borrow this audiobook from my library and I followed along because I uh, had somebody on a book to recommend that. I think it was great. So Elizabeth Acevedo actually read the audiobook herself and she did such a great job and so she was doing the slam poetry in slam poetry format on the audiobook when it needed to be done and it was absolutely wonderful it was it was moving it was powerful it was like made me want to get up and like do something and it just was so good and of course now which makes me even happy that I loved it is because she did sign in um I don't know if you can see that it's like she did it in a really pretty silver um, and she did personalize it for me and I met her and talked to her for a couple minutes and she was beautiful and sweet and I am so happy that I got this book because I loved it so much. Now if you have Hoopla and you want to just listen to the audiobook and see if you like it before you buy this book, because it is told within poetry, even though it looks, you know, like a normal size book, it's only like a three hour audiobook. So definitely pick it up if you are on Hoopla. So then the last thing that I read for April was another graphic novel that I got from Hoopla and it is called Chew and let's see oh and I'll put it right here so it is called Chew and I read volume one and so this is basically about a guy and I think it's called a sibiopath to where he can eat something and he can sense everything about it so for instance if he ate an apple he can picture in his head like the person that's planting the apple seed and then the person that comes in 
puts pesticide on it and the person that picks it and then who shipped it so everything about it so this one is a little bit odd so it has some uh, cannibalism of course because he's like eating people to find out who committed their murder stuff like that it's really weird okay and i didn't think that i would like it but i actually kind of loved it a little bit it, i gave it four stars and i'm definitely continuing on with the series because a they are all on hoopla and so i can read them from my library but b it's just kind of awesome like it's got a really good um art style and it's just so odd but it's so much fun i don't know i just really i just really liked it and if you're into kind of weird things like that i definitely suggest trying it out because it's kind of awesome so yeah that's all that that's all i have that are the that's the 12 books that i read for march and april combined um i am definitely excited that i finally seem to gotten out of my reading slump and out of my writing slump and i'm currently working on a couple different books so I'm excited to see where May brings me, especially since in May I will be getting on a plane and heading to New York City for BookCon. Um, so I will try to vlog going to New York City. I'm not sure how great I'll be because I'm very awkward in person. But I also wanted to mention that my, um, I, my announcement video that I posted before had about my podcast that I'm doing with Julie and Abel that has now gone live. The like an introduction episode which is like an episode zero about who we are and like what kind of writers we are went up on Abel's channel and then a episode one of what is writer's block is it real how do you you know how do you do how do you deal with it is episode one and it went up on Abel's channel today as I'm filming this May 4th um, so that'll be last Friday for you guys so definitely check that out if you want to watch the videos or if you are into podcast we are on you know itunes for free we are on stitcher radio google play there's a few other places i will link all of the in, all the places that you can see the videos and or listen to the podcast themselves listed down into the bar below but i also wanted to talk about one other thing that a new venture that i have decided to do i have opened up an etsy shop and it is called lachelle designs and i have started making bookmarks and art prints for right now, I'm focusing more on ones that are bookish, but aimed at authors more. Um, I will have some bookish ones coming later that I'm working on. Um, but here's a couple of designs that I wanted to show you. Um, things like this that says hashtag am writing. Um, I have this one that is hashtag author. Um, and I have ones that are like quotes from different authors like this one says the first draft of anything is shit by Ernest Hemingway um, this one just simply says right and I have one that could not, could go for anything else and it just says get shit done which is one of my favorite ones um, and I have an Edgar Allan Poe quote one that is really pretty you know and I have other ones that are quotes that just are there to motivate authors and everything um, so definitely take a look at that I will leave a link to the Etsy shop down below um, and if you use the coupon code uh, books and more then you can get 10% off your first order so definitely check that out I'm really excited about this new venture I'm hoping to expand into more bookish merchandise uh, eventually but for right now I'm focusing on art prints and bookmarks and if you have any suggestions of any kind of bookmarks or art prints or other bookish items that you think that you would like to see me give a try, then I'll definitely give that a good thought. Uh, but that's all I have for you today. So until next time, have a great day wherever you are and I love you. Bye.